Guy Rampillon was initially registered with the name Guy Rampillon upon his birth to a single mother in Vitre la Francais, Eastern France, on October 10th, 1962. According to his birth certificate, he was born in the central city of Anjou on October 15th of the same year, which is incorrect. His father is listed as Ancanu, meaning unknown. However, it has been later confirmed that his father was an American soldier named George Cartwright, who worked as a cook on the NATO bases and lived with Guy's mother for some time. At the age of six, Guy's mother, Helene, relinquished custody of him to the state. She took this step because she intended to marry a U.S. serviceman and immigrate to California, where she currently resides. She brought along another son, Stefan, who was three years older than Guy and was conceived with a different American serviceman. Helene, Guy's mother, hailed from a French military family. Her father, a retired NCO, cared for her first child, Stefan, until she decided to emigrate. However, he declined to take in Guy. To him, it was already challenging enough that his daughter had a child out of wedlock due to her attraction to Americans in uniform. In their small town of Anger, there was a social stigma attached to a woman having two children without being married. At this point, Guy was six years old, and the French Social Welfare Service intervened to place him with a foster family. He received the surname Georges from his father, and was later adopted by the Morin family. Growing up in a household with twelve adopted children, he lacked the love, attention, and stability essential for his well-being. Consequently, he started exhibiting a violent and aggressive demeanor. During that period in France, the practice for foster families involved issuing a new birth certificate with fabricated information to prevent the child from uncovering their true origins. This procedure was used for decades, but now in France it is eventually banned, as it is against basic human rights. Guy would go through the next 32 years of his life wondering who his father was. Guy was very close to his Catholic foster mother, who was rewarded in France for bringing up twelve foster children in addition to seven of her own. But in pre-adolescence he began to steal from the family food store, more significantly acquired a knife to hunt and kill animals in the countryside behind his village home. By the age of sixteen he had attacked two of his foster sisters, not for sexual reasons, but was sent to the state orphanage for adolescence. At seventeen he was jailed for stealing a woman's handbag after ripping her face open with a knife. For this he went to prison. A month after his nineteen-th birthday, Guy committed his first rape. It was now the sixteen-th November 1981, and he attacked a neighbor named Natalie when she was returning home. He raped her, stabbed her, and left her for dead. Incredibly, Natalie survived the attack. His next known crime was committed on the 7th of June 1982 in a car park where he raped, stabbed, and strangled a young French woman named Violette. But again she managed to escape and she went to the police. A few days later Guy was arrested and sentenced to 18 months in prison. He was released in early 1984 and soon after his release he attacked a 21-year-old girl named Pascal. Again in a car park he raped and stabbed her. She managed to break free and run away. Later that evening, police again arrested Guy. This time, the French sentenced him to ten years in prison. Guy was undoubtedly a person who was a danger to women. But due to his good behavior, the French court allowed him out of prison during the day. But he was required to report back each evening to spend the night in the cell. On the evening of the 24th of January 1991, Guy did not report back to prison and instead traveled to Paris. He spotted an attractive young woman walking down the road. It was 19-year-old Pascal Escaffel, a student at the Sorbonne. He followed her home and grabbed her as she was opening her front door. Holding a knife to her throat, he forced his way in, tied her up, and raped her before slitting her throat and watching her die. A week after the murder, Guy calmly returned to prison as if nothing had happened. Just over a year later he was released from prison and wasted no time in finding another young female victim. 
on the 22 ND of April 1992, just 18 days after his release, he attacked a young French female named Eleanor, who escaped and reported the incident to the police. Guy was arrested once more and again returned to prison. At the end of 1993, even though Guy had attacked a young lady 18 days after his release from prison, the French authorities amazingly decided that he should be allowed back into society. Guy took no time to start his crime spree again. Catherine Rock in an underground parking garage. He raped and murdered her. Six days later, he struck again. His victim was a French radio host named Annie, who he raped and murdered on the patio of her home. Guy then stopped killing for ten months. But then on the 9th of November 1994, in the underground parking garage of 22-year-old Elsa Benitez's home, he raped and killed her. A month later, the 10th of December, 1994, he raped and murdered a 33-year-old Dutch architect named Agnes Nitschkamp in her home. The media began to report a killer in East Paris. In June 1995, Guy attacked another young lady named Elizabeth Ortega. And despite his best attempts to kill her, she made a narrow escape. To evade a potential assault, she entered her apartment through a ground floor window following an extensive conversation with him. Subsequently, she reported the incident to the police and provided a somewhat unclear description of her assailant. Nevertheless, when presented with a photograph of Guy later on, she couldn't positively identify him. Several days afterward, on July 8, 1995, he raped and fatally assaulted 27-year-old Helena in her apartment shortly after she returned from a night out. His uncontrollable urge for rape and murder escalated, and a few weeks later, he assaulted another young French woman named Melanie, once again in Paris. The media extensively covered all the attacks, putting pressure on the police to apprehend the perpetrator. Unfortunately, the authorities were struggling to make progress. The press played a pivotal role in alerting the public to the similarities between the murders. Journalists coined the term Bastille Killer as two cases were in proximity to the monument, compelling the authorities to acknowledge the presence of a serial killer. It was alleged that the police didn't even interview Helena Franklin's neighbors about the murder until 23 months after her death, and Elizabeth Otega was shown a picture of her assailant over two years after the attack so it's no wonder she failed to recognize him. It is also claimed that police ignored accurate descriptions from other survivors and witnesses. Some claim that the police were distracted in Paris due to a 1995 Paris metro bombing and the 1997 investigation into Princess Diana's death when the entire force was mobilized to satisfy public opinion. On the 23 RD of September 1997, Guy broke into the apartment of 19-year-old student Magali Serati, and he raped and stabbed her to death. She was killed in the late afternoon on her return from work, in the flat where she lived with her fiancé. They were planning to get married in the spring and her wedding dress was in the wardrobe. Five days later, Guy assaulted a young Frenchwoman in the stairwell of her apartment block she managed to run away. His crimes continued in less than a month after. On 16 November 1997, Guy entered the home of 25-year-old Estelle Magth. He raped and murdered her. The police inquiry was gaining momentum, and investigators were now certain that several unresolved crimes were connected, pointing to the possibility of a serial killer. The intense media coverage of the killings had stirred a wave of panic among the population of Paris. The Beast of Bastille had become a widely recognized term fueled by the fact that several attacks took place in this particular area of Paris. This marked one of the most extensive manhunts in French criminal history. Police finally found Guy in Monomart and arrested him on the 27th March 1998. It transpired that his DNA matched that found on four crime scenes as well as one attempted rape. Confronted while in custody with this irrefutable DNA evidence, Guy confessed of these four murders as well as three others. He was kept in custody but tried to escape in December 2000, weeks before his trial was due to begin. 
he and three cellmates attempted to saw through the bars of the cell, but were caught by prison guards. Prior to his trial, Guy underwent psychiatric evaluations and was officially deemed mentally sound. The trial attracted widespread media attention, with inquiries arising about the French prison system, which had identified him as highly dangerous almost two decades earlier, yet repeatedly released him without proper treatment, financial support, or meaningful care. The media speculated that Guy's pursuit of information about his father had caused him considerable stress. However, just before the trial commenced, the original birth certificate was disclosed, revealing Guy's father's name and nationality at last. When he learned that his father was from the USA, it was as if he had been reborn. He leapt with joy. He retrieved the identity that he had been looking for all of his life. His father was from the USA and knowing this raised his self-importance and self-confidence. The three-week trial began on Monday 19 th March, 2001. The 50 witnesses included four women previously attacked and raped by Guy, members of the families of some of his victims and his 71-year-old foster mother. Despite the prosecutor presenting the DNA evidence as well as the confession given after his arrest, Guy pleaded not guilty to all charges. He retracted his confession claiming the police had tortured and beaten it out of him. A defeated Guy broke down in tears and confessed. He admitted the original four murders, as well as the rape and murder of Helena Franklin in 1995, Magali Serrati in 1997 and Estelle Macht in 1997, asking forgiveness from the victims' families. On Thursday 5 th April 2001, Guy Georges, by now 38 years old, was sentenced to life possibility of parole after 22 years. This means that the people of Paris may see Guy Georges back on their streets in 2023. Hello everyone and thanks so much for listening. If you liked the video, please leave a comment with your thoughts as I'd really like to know what you thought of this case. Please join me for the next brief case.